I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. It's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. certain things turn out to be fact in history books. Our government will lie, and that lie will become Let me a show fact. you something that uh, a lot of people today are still debating over. This is a Life magazine from September 24th, 1945. The article that appears on page 110 is titled Pearl yeah. Harbor. Uh, it says the facts were known to Republican presidential candidate Thomas Dewey in 1944. For a long time, the official explanation of Pearl Harbor was that we were slugged without warning when we were innocently going about our business. Slug Say we that we were slugged without warning is a radical distor a distortion of the truth. Roosevelt, the chief executive of the nation and the commander in chief of its army and navy, knew in advance Listen, knew in advance that the Japanese were going to attack the Japanese us. code had been uh, 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 solved for some time, and they knew that they were launching an attack against us, and we were not preparing our army and to Navy to withstand that attack. In fact, in many cases, what we were doing was even making sure that we this could be This is not the only case. There was also... A, an article, a major article in the uh, Chicago Tribune in, uh, in, during these years that also brought out the fact that we knew we were going to come under attack, etc. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Now, what got us into World War I? If you ask an historian, they give a number of different provocations, the Zimmerman Note, but probably the incident that was most inflammatory to the public was the sinking of the Lusitania. Now, the Lusitania was a British passenger ship on its way from New York to England, 1915. At that time, England was at war with Germany, but we had not yet joined World War I. Well, the ship went down, and the Americans were told that the Germans simply sank this ship to be ruthless. They saw an innocent passenger ship, wanted to kill a lot of women and children, and so down it That's went. That's why the Germans sank it. They sank it because the Lusitania was loaded from one end to the other with munitions, millions of rounds of ammunition and many other munitions. Everyone who su survived that disaster said there were two explosions, a smaller one and then a huge one. The small one was a torpedo hitting, the large one was the munitions detonating. The ship went down in just 18 minutes after a single torpedo significant. Before the tragedy, Winston Churchill, who was then head of the British Admiralty, had ordered a study to be done to determine what the political impact would be if a British passenger ship was sunk with Americans on board. And there were almost 200 Americans on board the Lusitania. Prior to the sinking of the Lusitania, an exchange took place between 
Sir Edward Grey, the British Foreign Minister, and Edward Mandel House, who is President Woodrow Wilson's top advisor. Here's the exchange of communications. Grey, what will America do if the Germans sink an ocean liner with American passengers on board? House's reply, I believe that a flame of indignation would sweep the United States, and that by itself would be sufficient to carry us into the war. Joseph Kenworthy, who was then in British Naval Intelligence, Commander Kenworthy, said this, The Lusitania was deliberately sent at a considerably reduced speed into an area where a U-boat was known to be waiting and with their escorts withdrawn. Why does he say, how can he say a U-boat was known to be waiting? Well, the British in 1915 had cracked Germany's naval codes and they knew the approximate location of every U-boat at that time. The British now, in the United States, an official hearing, investigation was, uh, was, uh, carried into looking into the sinking of Lusitania, but at that hearing, officials were only allowed to see a dummy manifest that omitted the ship's munition. The original manifest that listed the munitions was ordered by President Woodrow Wilson to be hidden in the archives of the U.S. Treasury. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall we had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. The United States official declaration of war in North Vietnam in 1964 came after an alleged incident involving two U.S. destroyers being attacked by North Vietnamese PT boats in the Gulf of Tonkin. This was known as the Gulf of Tonkin incident. This single situation was the catalytic pretext for massive troop deployment and full-fledged warfare. One problem, however, the attack on the U.S. destroyers by Vietnamese PT boats never happened. It was a completely staged event to have an excuse to enter the war. Former Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara stated years later that the Gulf of Tonkin incident was a mistake, while many other insiders and officers have come forward relaying that it was a contrived farce, a complete lie. Once in the war, it was business as usual. In October 1966, President Lyndon Johnson lifted trade restrictions on the Soviet bloc, knowing full well that the Soviets were providing upwards of 80% of North Vietnam's war supplies. Consequently, Rockefeller interests financed factories in the Soviet Union, which the Soviets used to manufacture military equipment and send it to North Vietnam. However, the funding of both sides of this conflict was only one side of the coin. In 1985, Vietnam's rules of engagement were declassified. This detailed what American troops were and were not allowed to do in the war. It included absurdities like North Vietnamese anti-aircraft missile systems could not be bombed until they were known to be fully operational. No enemy could be pursued once they crossed the border of Laos or Cambodia. And most revealing of all, the most critical strategic targets were not allowed to be attacked unless initiated by high military officials. Apart from these imposed ludicrous limitations, North Vietnam was informed of these restrictions and therefore could base entire strategies around the limitations of the American forces. This is why the war went on so long. And the bottom line is this, the Vietnam War was never meant to be won, just sustained. This war for profit resulted in 58,000 American deaths and 3 million dead Vietnamese.